Hello, this is Abhijit Mukherjee. Today we are going to study Class 6 Science, Chapter 2, Components of Food. To study Class 6, Chapter 2, Components of Food. Ruby has baked an apple pie for her sister. Let us identify the main nutrients present in each ingredient added to the apple pie. Eggs, flour, butter, sugar, apples. Do you think any nutrient is missing in this taste? Yes or no? Let us understand what is exactly food. Food is essential for all animals including human beings. The food that we eat contains different components. Let us now understand the various components of the food, their names and their importance. The food that we eat consists of different components or nutrients. N-U-T-R-I-E-N-T-S Nutrients are substances that are needed by a body for proper growth and healthy body function. There are six main components or nutrients present in the food. Number one, carbohydrates. Number two, fats. Number three, proteins. Number four, vitamins. Number five, minerals. And number six, roughage or dietary fibers. And lastly, water. These nutrients fulfill different needs of the body. Carbohydrates are those type of foods that provide energy to our body, which keeps us going throughout the day. There are two main types of carbohydrates, sugar and starch. Let's see what are the sources of carbohydrates. You can see the figure. Now, sugar is also called simple carbohydrates, consisting of fruits, honey and table sugar. Starch is also a carbohydrate, but it's complex in nature. Plants store the energy in the form of starch. It is stored in the form of rice, wheat, corn, potato, breads. When we eat plant products containing sugar and starch, our digestive system breaks them down into glucose. This glucose, which is the simplest form of sugar, is then absorbed into the bloodstream and provides us energy. Undertake an activity to taste the presence of sugar in a food item. The materials required would be food sample, benetic solution, taste tube, Boons and burner. The method would require crushing of the small amount of food sample and putting in the taste tube, adding some water to the taste tube and shaking it, and then adding a few drops of benetic solution to the taste tube and heating it for about a minute. We will observe, depending amount of the sugar present, the benetic solution which is blue in color will turn green if it has low sugar content. It will turn yellow if the food has medium sugar content. It will turn brick red if it is having high sugar content. So the conclusion is the color change of the Benedict solution will confirm as the presence of sugar. Let us now test the presence of starch in a food item. The materials required would be food sample, dilute iodine solution, test tube and Boons and burner. The method would require crossing the small amount of food sample and putting it in the test tube, adding some water to the test tube and shaking it. Next, we should heat the taste tube for about a minute and if the taste tube is cooled down, then we add a few drops of dilute iodine solution. We will observe the food sample turns bluish black if it is containing starch. So the conclusion is the change in the color of the food sample to bluish black confirms the presence of the starch. Fats are those kinds of food components which also provides us energy. There are two types of fats, saturated and unsaturated fats. Fats, S-A-T-U-R-A-T-E-D, -E saturated fats are normally solids at room temperature like the water and the ghee. Whereas the unsaturated fats, U-N-S-A-T-U-R-A-T-E-D, -E unsaturated fats are mostly liquid at room temperature like the vegetable oil. Meat, oil, ghee, nuts, butter, cheese are the sources of fats. Milk, fish, egg are also containing fats. You can see the sources of fats, though the fats are essential for our body, Eating too much fat items rich in like fats can be harmful. Excess body fat leads to a condition called obesity and obesity may also lead to heart disease. Let us now do the activity to taste the presence of fat in a food item. The materials required would be the food sample and a sheet of filter paper. Method would require the food sample, if it is a liquid, it should be rubbed a small amount of it onto the filter paper. If the food sample is solid, it should be kept between the folds of the filter paper and crushed. The observation would be the oily stain appears on the filter paper if fat is present in the food item. 
So the conclusion is the appearance of oily stain will confirm the presence of fat. The next component of food item is called protein. Proteins are needed by our body for muscle building and for repairing worn out tissues. Our muscles, organs and even bloods are made up of mostly proteins. If we do not eat proteins, our body will not be able to repair the damaged cells or build new ones. As you can see, the proteins in this our diet come from both animals and plant sources. Meat, fish, egg and milk are animal sources of proteins. Pulses, soybeans, grams and nuts are also plant sources of proteins. Now we are going to taste the presence of proteins in an activity out of a food item. The materials required would be food sample, for example the egg white, the copper sulphate solution, the sodium hydroxide solution, test tube and Bunsen burner. The method required, the first step is taking a small amount of the egg white and putting in the test tube. The second step would require to add some water to the test tube and shake it. The third step would require heating the test tube for about a minute. And the last step would be to add, after the test tube is getting cooled down, add two drops of each copper sulfate solution and sodium hydroxide to it. What we will observe is the food sample will turn purple or violet. And the conclusion would be that the change in color of the food samples to purple or violet confirms the presence of the proteins. Another component of food is called vitamins. Vitamins are needed for the proper functioning of our body. They help in keeping our eyes, bones, teeth and gums healthy. There are 13 vitamins, each of which has a specific function. Vitamins are of two types, fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. Between B1, B2, B3, B6 and B12 as well as folic acid all together known as vitamin B complex and vitamin C are water soluble vitamins. Since water soluble vitamins are not stored in body they need to be regularly supplied through the food items such as citrus fruits, spinach and other green leafy vegetables. Lack of vitamins in the body can cause deficiency diseases. Group of Components of food are called minerals. Just like vitamins, minerals also help our body to stay healthy. Minerals perform important functions such as the formation of bones, teeth and blood cells and helps in maintaining a normal heartbeat. Minerals are of two types, macro minerals and trace minerals. Macro minerals, as the word macro suggests it is large, are needed by the body in large amounts as compared to the trace elements which are required in small quantities. Calcium, magnesium, sodium and potassium are the examples of some macro minerals. The trace minerals are very small amounts of iron, zinc, copper and iodine which are needed by the body. Now roughage and dietary fibers. The portion of the plant food that remains undigested and do not provide any nutrients to our body but provides bulk to our food is called roughage or dietary fibers. Roughage helps in maintaining a healthy digestive system. The vegetables that contain roughage, as you can see, dietary fibers or roughage is of two types, soluble and insoluble. Soluble fibers are soluble in water, whereas insoluble fibers are not soluble in water. Apple, strawberry, peach and rice are examples of food items rich in soluble fibers. Whole grain, carrot, cabbage, turnip and cauliflower are examples of food items rich in insoluble fibers. Lack of insoluble fibers in the diet causes the stool to become hard and difficult to pass. This condition is called constipation. Last of the food component is water which is consisting almost 70% of our body weight. Water is needed for our body for good health. It helps in transporting substances inside our body, in absorbing the nutrients from the food, in regulating our body temperature, and also needed for various chemical reactions such as digestion and excretion which takes place inside our body. We get water not only from the liquids that we drink but also from the food we eat. Milk, fruits, vegetables, juices are good sources of water. We need to drink at least 2 to 3 liters of water per day to keep healthy.